He's a little noisy, aren't you, buddy? Just a little noisy. Today, I'm going to tell you how I built my own police car on a shoestring budget and how you can do it the same. Repo just went for a run, so he's probably going to be heard in the background, so sorry about that, but uh, he's a little hot and a little tired, so he's going to lay on this concrete floor and soak up all that cool air. So we're going to talk about how I made the police car today. So it's going to be primarily me talking, so if you're not a fan of talking videos, I'm sorry, but it's a really cool story and I think it's really fun to share. So it all started out, I was scrolling through Craigslist, and I really, really, really wanted a four-door, because all I've had is two doors, like the Dart, and I didn't have the charger at the time, but... You get the point. I still had it, or like stuff like that, pretty much. And I really wanted something that everybody could fit in. That was my main purpose. And I kind of toyed with the idea of building a one Adam 12 car, which would I think the first Mopar that they used was the '67 Belvedere. And I was almost this close to buying one that was just like it. It was already white, small block, which the show car was a big block, obviously. But I was gonna do it up, paint it black and do the uh, star on the door and everything, do the lights on the top, but the guy ended up deciding not to want to sell it. So I went back and started looking again, and I find this 1965 Chrysler Newport, and it looked like it had been through quite a lot. I think he was asking like $1,500 at the time. I can't exactly remember, but uh, I said, hey, what's the lease you take for it? He said, I'll take $900 for it. So it was about 30 or so minutes from where I was, uh, where I went to school at the time, and I drove up there, checked it out, liked what I saw, the transmission and apparently uh, quit pulling, and they didn't know why. Checked the fluid in it, it had actually no fluid in it at all, it had zero. So I thought, well, maybe surely that the transmission is just bad because of that. So I buy it, and it was about three hours from home, I drove three hours there, three hours back. It's quite a trip, it was very fun. I have pictures of it that hopefully if I do this right, you will see pictures of the story that I'm telling like somewhere in this area. You'll, you'll see it. But anyways, um, we get it home and it actually weighed more than the truck that was pulling it, but we still made it home obviously. So the first order of business was to figure out uh, why one of the wheels was locked up. I, can't, I think it was the front right. The front right wheel was locking up. So I disassembled it, pulled the drum and all I did was back out the uh, the adjuster that uh, pushes the uh, drums out, or the shoes out, my bad, pushes those out, and I just backed it out so that way it would roll freely. It had a two barrel on it that didn't work that well. Um, the exhaust was barely hanging on, and I drove the car. So I got it running, the brakes were junk, and I just eased it down the road to see what it was like, turned around and came back and it was pretty bad. The alternator was bad on it, the brakes were bad on it, but it would shift all three gears after I filled it up with fluid, so that, that was pretty good. So the first thing I did was uh, actually put all new brakes on it, master cylinder, hoses, uh, drums, shoes, whole nine yards, everything. So after I did that, put a new carburetor on it, alternator, voltage regulator, and I think that was it. So I drove it for a little bit like that. I was like, man, this is pretty cool. I, I kind of like having a four-door. I was like, man, should I make a police car or should I not? I, I kept toying with that idea and I just couldn't figure out if I wanted to do it. And finally, I talked myself into it. Uh, it, it didn't want to run. It was actually having a hard time running for some reason. And the distributor went bad in it. That's what it was. So I was driving it. I was going to drive it to a friend of mine uh, Cole, you've seen him on the channel before. He, I was going to take it to his house to paint it because he had a place that we could paint it at. And we had been messing with the distributor all day long trying to get it to run right. And finally I got the thing to run the way it was supposed to. And it ran out of gas. On the way there, broke down in the middle of the road, and he had to flat tell me the rest of the way. So it was pretty eventful just to get this thing even painted. So we pulled in, got into the shop, repo you. I'm sorry if you hear it, but anyways, uh, we pulled him to the shop, 
Uh, went to Walmart, bought like $100 worth of supplies, paint, tape, scuff pads, mask, and everything. And proceeded to tape off everything, scuff it all off. I didn't even like sand the rust off of it. That's, I mean, this was like legit budget. I didn't do hardly near as much as I should have. But took some scuff pads, scuffed it down, taped it off, and you know, all sorts of newspaper, taped off everything. Took about three hours just to just take the car off. And got to that point. I did the white on the doors first because I knew it would be easier to do it that way. And then tape all of that off after it's painted to do the black. So we did the white, let it dry for a little while, masked it all off, and then shot the black. And I drove it home. I drove it. I didn't actually drive it home. I didn't get to drive it home because something went wrong with it again. So I had to flat tow it back home and got there and proceeded to like, what should we do now? So I actually went to a swap meet found a light that was orange and I actually took some of that uh, VHT tail light tint that you know you can paint it either black or red. I got the red tint and painted it red and it really held up really well. I was surprised. I didn't expect it to work that well but it did. So put that on the roof and then I had to think about what do I want to put for a star. So my mom she's really good about uh, cutting out vinyls and decals. She's really talented with that stuff. Uh, got her to make me a giant star. It says Sheriff under it, and then I put C65 on the fender for obviously 65 Chrysler. And I thought it was pretty cool, you know. But what is a police car without a siren? And this is probably one of the coolest things that I did, I feel like. Um, went on to Amazon, found a siren that I liked, liked the way it sounded. Only $20. That thing was massive, too. So bolted it to the car, and it is it's really cool. And you've always seen the car in my intros, and that's basically where we're at right now. That's I had it finished up to that point. So at that point, I decided, hey, you know, this thing's kind of quiet, and I don't like the exhaust on it because it's really restrictive, and I want to hear the car. Took it down to Sammy's, had them run uh, two glass packs out the back all the way to the bumper, and the thing sounds really cool. So unfortunately, the car likes to eat transmissions because I keep putting used ones in it. Uh, remember how I said it was slipping at first? Well, the first one ended up actually giving up, losing third gear, and being that I had zero money at the time, I actually borrowed one from my dad that he had already knew was bad, but it was good enough to get the car up to you know third gear and at least keep going. It would slip between second and third. If you let off the gas, then it would go into gear. And I drove it like that for probably about a year, slipping between second and third. And then finally, one day I went in to get the car and it wouldn't go into third gear. I drove it and drove it and I didn't realize that the speedometer cable had actually come out and drained all the fluid out of the transmission. I didn't know it until I went in to get and drive it. So I added fluid to it and it, and it, was, it was already too far gone at that point. So after that, took that transmission out. Put another one in it that was used, which is the one in it now, and it, it, it shifts really well, so we're good at that front. Um, so I, I've really just been driving it and really having a lot of fun with it. I've still got a lot I need to do to it. I want to fix up the interior, fix the shifter in the floor because it's still, if you remember that video, uh, it's still made out of like blocks of wood because I just have not had time to mess with that car the way that I want to. I just put tires on it until I could drive it not that long ago. It's been sitting for a pretty good while, which is unfortunate. I'd really like to drive it a lot more, but... We're, we're gonna we're gonna get there. We're gonna have a lot of fun with it. So now we're just really having a lot of fun and driving it and enjoying it and taking it to car shows. I've been I've had some people actually send me pictures on Instagram saying, "Hey, I saw you driving down the road," and it's pretty cool. You know, it's it's kind of cool that that car can get recognized in places and a lot of people have fun with it. You know, it's it's something that anybody can relate to. My biggest problem is that people think that it's Andy Griffith's car. And Andy Griffith drove a Ford, not a Chrysler, and. The fact that it is a four-door hardtop, not a sedan, I mean, it doesn't really bother me, but, you know, it's whatever you like. It's, it really isn't what a real police car should be, but it, it does look the part. And also, one thing that people ask me is, is the red light illegal? And I've never in my life of driving that car, I've had that car looking like that for probably about two years, never had a police officer pull me over. I've actually had a police officer ask me if he can take a picture with it. So. You good? So then, I mean, I've never had a problem with it. Now I know blue lights in certain states are illegal. I don't know about red, but 
I mean, it's simple as like unbolting a screw if it's a problem. But I've never ever had a problem with it and I've driven it multiple miles just everywhere. So as far as I know, whenever you start impersonating a police officer is whenever you get into trouble. But anyways, I just wanted to tell you guys the story of that car. Just a quick little video on how I got it, where I got it, what I've done to it, and just it, it, how much fun it's been. The reason that I brought this car up is because this Saturday, May 26, 2018, so if you watch it after this, I'm sorry, but on the 26th of May of this year, 2018, uh, I will be taking it to a car show. My dad's going to be taking something of his. I don't know exactly what yet. He talked about the petty truck, but we'll see. But uh, I'm 99% sure I want to take the police car as long as the weather permits. It's saying about 50% chance of rain at the moment. But the car show is called the Alabama Jubilee. It's in Decatur, Alabama at Point Mallard State Park. So if you guys are interested in coming out, seeing the police car, feel free to do so. I'll leave a link in the description below that is a uh, website that kind of gives you like directions and what the car shows like and it has all sorts of different stuff. It has like a tractor show, swamp meet, and I think there's hot air balloons or whatever. But anyways, if you want to come out and see the police car and talk to me, you know, I'll show you around the cars, I'll show you, you know, ask me questions, whatever you want. But I will be at the Alabama Jubilee in Decatur, Alabama this weekend. But anyways guys, that's all I've got. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoy this car story. Um, hopefully I'll have some more car stories for you and you know talk about how I've gotten every single vehicle that I've ever owned. You know, stuff like that. I just thought this was a little bit different, and I, th I think he's okay. But I thought it would be nice to just kind of have a conversation with you guys, you know. But anyways, if you like the video, please leave a like down below. Feel free to comment. If you have any questions for me, don't forget to subscribe. Order your t-shirts right here and your stickers. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.